And welcome everyone to an America East chat. I'm Andy Katz. Pleased to be joined by Vermont's John Becker, the coach of the year of the America East yet again. And uh, John, um, this was an interesting season because you guys were projected to win it. You did win it. Uh, but as we talked earlier in the season, you know, Stony Brook comes out, kind of knocks you guys back on your heels. Uh, and then you had to reset, uh, not able to run through this league undefeated, which is, I don't care what league you're in, very difficult. I mean, how would you assess the way you guys navigate, navigated what ended up being a much deeper league than I think a lot of people projected? Yeah, uh, like, like you said, said we, we lost the first one to Stony Brook and then won 12, 12 in a row. And then UOBC came up here um, uh, and beat us. Actually, lost, the two losses were at home. Um, but um, like you said, yeah, you know, as you got into the league, you saw the parity. Um, and right down to the last set of games, I mean, uh, um, you know, uh, anyone can beat anyone. And, and I think that, and I told the guys, I think that makes it even more special this year to uh, get through the league with, you know, 14 and two. Um, and the next, next closest team, I think, had six losses. So, um, so I think uh, the league was really, but, you know, we had to work every night for the wins. And, and um, the league was really good this year. And, um, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was exciting that we were able to bounce back after that opening night loss. I mean, look, it's not totally abnormal to lose a home game. I mean, and you look at out in the Mountain West, for example, San Diego State had one loss in their regular season, and it was at home to UNLV. But why do you think this team was able to navigate the road so well? Yeah, I think because defense travels, you know, and I think we're a good defensive team. Um, you know, this three out of the last four years, we've been undefeated in league on the road. We all had one road loss in the last four years. I was down at... Um, last year down at UNBC. So we've been really good on the road um, historically, but, you know, to do it in league um, at the level that we've done it, um, I think speaks to the kind of guys we have in the locker room. And, um, you know, I think, you know, when you're a good defensive team, it gives you a chance, uh, especially on the road. So you know this pressure. You've been there many times before. You're going to host Maine in the first round. Uh, obviously, by winning the league, you get to stay at home the whole way. But you've also lost at home before, and obviously a couple of years ago to UMBC, notably. So uh, how do you how do your guys approach this game seven sense of urgency that you're now in that you've been in before? Yeah, I mean, you know, what we talked about, what we talked about, what we talked about last year was really just trying to attack this tournament and go win it. Um, I think sometimes as a number one seed, like you said, there's expectations that you think. Um, you know that you can sometimes play uh, not to lose, and um, we want to be real aggressive here. Uh, we've done a, a great job uh, all year, um, but let's uh, let's have a real aggressive attacking mindset. Go try to win the tournament. Um, our guys are experienced enough to have been in you know uh, these situations a lot, have had a lot of success, um, but we want to make sure uh, we have a real health, a good aggressive mindset, and um, you know understand that start right with Maine who's playing as well as anyone in our league you know and, and we had a tough game up there early in the year and uh, they're coming in hot and um, you know they're playing as, like I said as well as anyone in our league so we're going to have our hands full right right from the jump. All right so Anthony Lamb player of the year again uh, how hard is it do you think for a player of his stature when everyone every scout is focused on stopping him yeah. for a second year in a row uh, you could argue maybe three years in a row everyone's been focusing on him, but still, to be able to handle that, know that it's coming, and yeah. still be so successful. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable his growth as a player. And like you said, I mean, this year uh, he's seeing double teams, triple teams before he even gets the ball. They're just all loaded to him. Um, he's really become a willing passer and, um, you know, make you pay for double teams. And, uh, you know, just making the right play. We've really worked hard with him, with the coaching staff, worked hard with him um, to really uh, become a complete basketball player. He's, and he's an incredible worker and student of the game. And, and, and um, really, really hard uh, every night for him. Teams are really chippy with him, really trying to get under his skin. And, um, you know, he's, he's kept his composure throughout the year, uh, you know, and, and um, again, just been uh, everything for us. So, John, I, you know, I want to ask you, and I know you answered a lot of questions about this, uh, did a wonderful job on, uh, on SportsCenter talking to Scott Van Pellet about it and, and just nationally, but what you experienced uh, in your last game uh, with Josh Spidell, uh, you know, really the cooperation also with Albany. I'm curious just the backstory of that. 
when that started and how you were able to get that going for everyone to be on the same page, Albany, you guys, the officials, to yeah. allow a, just an unbelievably wonderful event to occur. Everybody yeah, you're right. Um, and, and this has been something that we've been um, hoping that we could get to with Josh, where he could take the floor, um, be introduced into starting a lot of score basket. And, you know, about a month ago, you know, physically it really was coming along great and, and knew it would be possible. I reached out to, to Will Brown, came up with this plan with Josh where he would, uh, they would score the first basket, and then we would score a basket, and then we'd take him out. Um, uh, and then, you know, John, me and Josh kind of agreed on that and came up with a plan and brought it to Will, and he was unbelievable. I mean, um, what a class act he is and that program is, and um, it couldn't be, you know, a better team that we could cooperate with. And then we reach out to the NCAA, let them know what's going on in our league office, um, who let the officials know. The officials were tremendous, too, and um, it all went off beautifully. And, um, um, you know, so a big thank you to everyone that was involved. They made this, this night happen. It was, um, uh, you know, a thing all, everyone that was there will remember the rest of their lives. Well, John, it was, once again, it was a wonderful moment for all of us to witness from afar. It could have been, I'm sure it was incredible in person. Congratulations yet uh, again on yet another honor. And uh, we'll see how the Catamounts uh, handle the expectation to be the top seed here in the America East over the next week and a half. Yeah, and just one thing before we uh, go, I'd just I'd be remiss if I did not thank my staff, you know, for his coaching year on there. It's really a staff award, and Kyle Saplicki, my associate uh, head coach, who's been with me all nine years, uh, Ryan Schneider, Hamlet Tibbs, Greg Snyder, my operations guy, and uh, and Derek O'Grady, uh, my assistant, um, you know, they make it, you know, um, they make it all possible, and, uh, you know, when you talk to Anthony Lamb, uh, he's won it two years in a row. Uh, Trey Bell Haynes won it two years. You know this this coach's award is usually tied to the Player of the Year award very very tightly. Appreciate it, John. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.